everybody. Welcome to our next artist talk. Today we are joined by multimedia artist Felicia Prieto and of course our wonderful panel curator Juliana Ferrero and our cultural programming manager Jody Lashinsky. So you know we have been talking with artists who have been featured in our exhibition from the inside and today our artist actually has a very special relationship with the curator. So Juliana why don't you tell us a little bit about that. Hi, Kay. Hi, Kay. everybody. Um, well, Felisa Preto is uh, my sister, and I was really happy to welcome her as being part of the project. And as I mentioned in our previous interviews, when I saw the poems that came from the program Free on the Inside, they were so raw, they were so true, so transparent, that I started to look into my immediate circle, who, would like, who, who I would like to invite to participate and I know Felisa's trajectory as an artist is very strong and um, I just sent she was one of the first people that I sent a few of the poems and she really clicked with two of them and then we started brainstorming about uh, which pieces will will go there and uh, something that I haven't mentioned yet in the in the other interviews is that as we were coming up with the exhibition I wanted that the pieces were free from any type of borders. So she's going to talk about one of her pieces, but the way that we install it is as if that chord doesn't have a beginning or an end. So that was one of the things that I wanted um, that each of the pieces in the show will have. And her pieces are um, one of the, well, it, it just, it just accomplishes that that they don't have any borders, they don't have a beginning and end. So, Felisa, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the two poems that you selected because they were so powerful for you, you connected with them so strongly. So why don't you tell us, tell us a little bit more about that? Of course, hello everybody. So the two poems that I chose, uh, one of them is called The Flight, or I'm sorry, The Fight um, by Jay Cunningham. And it's, a, it's an amazing piece because it talks about the detachment and wanting to overcome all the conflict that you have, whether in an environment or with relationships, whether it be with your family or friends or whatever, whatever you're encountering in life. And so that piece is actually called number two. Uh, it's a big rope and it's actually symbolizes the second chakra which is almost the umbilical cord so it, it is an umbilical cord so like juliana said it doesn't have a beginning and an end that rope can go forever um, and it's extremely heavy if you if you look at it is five times crochet so it's extremely heavy so it's it, it helps to understand all of the things that come together in specific situations so for example if if i go to the grocery shop it's not just that um moment but what comes before that and what goes after that everything has everything is connected so everything basically becomes memory which actually happens to be the second piece which is resembling a brain um, and it, that one is actually made with pillowcases, or not pillowcases, the, the stuffing inside the pillows. Um, and they're all wrapped in small bundles. So it's extremely fragile, but it's also very condensed, very heavy as the umbilical cord. So it's both pieces are really more like memory is about overcoming all difficulties or good things like how do you decide to get rid of a memory or your your brain just forgets about something to give space to another one so. and and the way that we decided to install that piece is also her passing on the building it comes from a corner it ends up at the corner of the different wall and how we installed it we were looking at the sunlight how it was hitting the wall that day and how it was hitting the transparency on the poems and the shadows so this is an exhibition that no detail is a small so the diagonal how the cord was installed is because it's following the sunlight of that day which also marks the passing of time so it's extremely powerful. 
So Jody, I know when you and I were there and, and we were looking at the exhibition, you had some really interesting thoughts about how you thought Felicia put it together. Why don't you jump in on that area? Well, you know, it's so interesting to hear Juliana talk about the process of how you put the the whole event together and the whole exhibit together and what it's going to look like, how the shadows hit it. I, I, can you tell us, uh, Felicia, a little bit about the process of you putting together your artwork, the process? That That's what I'm really truly interested in. Sure. Um, so the rope, the uh, number two, uh, it's all crocheted. Uh, it's um, it's made with a couple of used clothes of mine. Uh, mainly is um, uh, industrial felt, so it's made out of plastic. Um, and I chose that that uh, material because even though it's tender, it's still plastic and could suffocate you. Um, and even though it's a numerical cord, it's a it's a rope. You know, like how much detachment, like, yes, it's soft, it's tender and it's beautiful and it looks harmless, but it's still, the weight will, will hold you down. Um, I buy all the, uh, um, all the materials, all the felt, and I just, it takes a long time. Um, that piece actually took 10 years to make. It took 10 years, 2009 to 2019. Um, and it has traveled everywhere. It actually started in Chicago. Uh, and every time I moved, it's being from New York, Houston, just as being in storage, it's like, I need to finish it. I need to complete this. And so what I did, it's, you know, I used to cut all the pieces you make into a line and then you crochet it once and then twice, three times. So it, it becomes more condensed. So if I were to unravel the whole rope, I don't even know how long it would be. Like right now, the way you see it is about 20 feet. I'm more or less measured it. It's extremely heavy. Um, so yes, that, that is one piece. And the colors also, as if you see, there are segments of it those colors actually change based on the situations that I was in at that moment in time. So if I, if I was feeling sad or something, then you would see like dark blues, blacks, grays, sometimes white. Uh, some parts or most of it is red uh, that would indicate that I was in a relationship or, you know, that I was, in this big change in my life. So it's, you know, it's, it's almost like a diary that yeah. I would think about it. Um, and the second one, uh, like I said, is pillow stuffing. So everything is recycled. I did not buy anything for that. So people just get rid of them. Uh, and I would just grab all the pillow stuffing and just wrap it one at a time, one at a time, like a tiny, tiny ball with um, black thread. Uh, and it took five years to make. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's very dense, but it's also, you know, it's when you look at it, it's very condensed, it's very thick. But if you move it around, it's very easily, um, it, can, it can fall apart very easily because there are no knots, no nothing. If, and, and actually, when we were installing it, some of the pieces were just like moving around. It's like, oh my God, oh my God. So it's, it, it's a beautiful piece. I would love for people to actually be able to touch it because it can fall apart so much. And the reason why I did it like that is because it, it helps the idea of how memories are uh, just ephemeral. They're just, they're just memories, they're neurons, they're, and they're so easily forgotten. Um, some of the, um, there are some cavities that actually remind me of teeth for some reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's also like how, what happens to all those memories? You know, what, what happens to all those gaps? Does, does the brain just stops functioning or that space to create new ones like what is it is it it's all intricate like how one thing just if you take one chunk out of it then is it still the same brain are those still memories so 
Wow. You know, it was funny when I saw that piece, I didn't really understand the context of, of your inspiration on it, but it did kind of remind me of a brain looking at it. And I, I know in your website, you talk about the inventory of things and places left behind. Yes. So yes. You, you're talking, you, you're talking a lot about memories and weaving. And when you're talking about the one piece that it took you all those years and your emotions were kind of literally tied up mm -hmm. into that piece. Talk to me a little bit about some of your other art pieces. Is that also almost like a diary for you when you're talking about this inventory of places and things? Um, yes, everything actually is a diary. And if you look at all my work, it's about riddance, like just removing things, removing layers and what it is underneath it all. So I actually have, I do a lot of photography. Uh, most of the photography that I do is either uh, macro so it's very detailed, like almost that you can touch it. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that I still, since I do a lot of fibers, I love playing with that texture of things that you can, you don't really recognize what they are. You just want to touch it. Um, I have a series that it's uh, for nail polish. So I actually let my nails, I normally bite my nails. So a mechanism is to put nail polish and the color actually correlates with how I'm feeling at that point. And so I let the nails grow and then I wipe it off and I take photographs of the cotton balls with, with the remaining whatever came off. So that color. Um, another piece is about uh, waxing. Um, <laughs> So it's also about beauty, you know, like how how many things we actually have to do to uh, be Very able. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just everything like nail polish and everything. But the, the waxing, that one is very interesting. A lot of people have uh, very strong reactions because the photographs, um, they look like skin. Um, people don't really understand what it is. So I have to be. I had to tell them, oh, well, that's actually uh, wax. Oh, but what is that? Oh, that's actually the hair under my armpit. So, <laughs> yes. So it's very interesting because, you know, like when, when you get waxed or something, you just, you get rid of that. But the idea, the reason why I take those photos is because I'm more interested on what's underneath. So when you, when you wax, you see the root of it. So it's basically a confronting the root of the problem. So, so, so Jody, Juliana, do you have any other questions that you want to engage Felicia with right now? Oh, one more question that I always have of artists is, it took you 10 years to do one piece and it took you five years to do another piece. How do you know when it's done? <laughs> um, I could say it's never done. Uh, the brain could keep gathering memories, but at some point in life, you have to let things go. Um, you have to like, you know what, I, I need to move on. Uh, I need to start a new chapter in my life. And that's basically it. Like the rope can go forever. It was actually meant to be uh, 1,500 miles <laughs> That's not, that was the distance from uh, where I used to live in Chicago. And when I actually started that rope uh, of the person that I was dating that was here in Florida. So, wow. you know, things change, circumstances change, and we just have to move on. So something else will, will come up. And, you know, maybe, maybe if I stumble upon the, the uh, pillow, the brain, and I... I feel that I need to add more, then I will add more. You know, it's just, it's never ending. Like, I, it will stop when I die. <laughs> now things can come back. Great. Well, no, Felicia, that's amazing. I mean, I just, I just love how your emotions really feed your art and, and feed your art in all the different categories that you're doing, which is, is tremendous. And so ladies, thank you so much for joining us. And you know, this is really exciting to have these two phenomenally talented sisters, you know, share their love and their love of art with us today. So thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you on our next Artist Talk. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.